Hello, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to Craft World. Thank you for joining me. Now, today I've got another template for you. This is from Die Cutting Essentials, so it's issue 101. Um, this one is for a really simple gift box, and you can download this for free on Craft World. You'll have seen examples of this being used in the magazine, Die Cutting Essentials, um, but I'm going to show you a, well, a really quick and easy way to put it together. So in the magazine, you'll have your photo step-by-steps, and here's kind of your video tutorial for it. So with this one, I've printed it out as a normal scale, so 100%. And I'm keeping it that size because it's actually a very long, thin box. So I'm using, making the most of my A4 paper. And then um, this is actually really thin. So if you're giving something like some small cubes of fudge, uh, maybe you create jewellery, maybe you want to give some pens, pencils, stationery, that sort of thing anything like that this can be for absolutely perfect for filling up with chocolates now it can be horizontal or it can be vertical depending on which of these tabs you glue and which ones you leave so that they open so i'm going to be creating this so that it opens on the long edge just for a little bit of difference now what i'm also going to be using is i've got some bright pink cardstock here and then i've also got some papers here uh, that i'm going to decorate it with now these gorgeous papers have all come from the paper craft society box now this is a box i want to say 43 the one by kathy andronicu so i'm going to be using these papers from there and if you do have the box you can then of course download even more of the papers so let's get started the first thing we're going to need is a repositionable glue or a temporary glue and I just spray the back of my template and then pop that onto my cardstock so pop it in the middle my cardstock has been cut from a larger a3 piece which is why it's a little bit wonky not such a straight edge there and it's larger than my sheet of paper then I'm going to use my trimmer just for a few of the edges not all the edges um, because there's lots of little ones here but I'm just going to use it for the long edges to make sure they're nice and neat particularly on this Oh no, on this one here, because this is going to be uh, the top flap. So I want to make sure they are nice, neat, straight lines. Obviously making sure that your blade doesn't need replacing or anything like that, so you don't get any feathering. So pop that inside the gaps in my trimmer. Cut that one away. And then for the rest of the template, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and work my way around here. So there's all my cutting around the edge done so with these templates any solid lines are going to be where you're going to cut any dotted lines are where you're going to score so now i'm going to use the scoring blade and that's the white one on my creative craft products trimmer and i'm going to score all of these dotted lines now the beauty of these with this one is that they are actually right angle lines so nice and easy i can just work my way through them keeping one of the edges but up against there and I should get it nice and straight. So again, I'm just going to work my way across the entire sheet, scoring a few times, I do go over a few times, each and every one of these dotted lines. There we go, now time to remove my template. And essentially what you want to do is with the outside towards you, every fold needs to be a mountain fold, nice and easy. So you're pushing all the tabs or all, all the folds away from you, kind of create, if I look at it this way, create your mountains. So that's all along this line, all of those tabs as well. So we've got the smaller tabs on the long edges, like so. You've got one long tab on this edge. Make sure that's gently pressed down. The longer they are, the harder it is to keep them nice and straight. So just take it slowly. And then you want to also mountain fold all of the long lines across the box. There we go. So as I say, you can glue this along the long edge if you want to and glue the bottom together or one of the bases together and leave the top open if you want but what I'm going to do is differently I'm going to be gluing so that this one with the flap here is actually uh, an opening for a box uh, and these will go down so I'm going to be adhering these two side pieces the short ends will be the side pieces so the best way to do that is to fold in 
if you keep the tab at the top the long tab at the top away from you and fold in the first and the third strips tabs there I'm just going to apply some glue to each of these and we're going to bring these both up to a right angle I'll just fold this one back so you can see what I'm doing and they are both going to adhere to the short panels at the end and if you want to make sure you've got that nice and straight just fold that top piece over for now we'll glue that down in a moment but for now we're just gluing these side tabs on and the same that end everything should sit nicely at a right angle so just check everywhere it's a good idea if you've used a wet glue as i have rather than a say a red liner tape if you use something like a peg just a wooden peg just to hold these together while they dry they shouldn't take too long if you're using a quality wet glue so i've used today the um cosmic shimmer creative from creative expressions their specialist acrylic glue which dries very quickly um, also if you have the craft stash glue for example creative craft products glue that works brilliantly as well so there you go I think they're about dry so all I'm going to do now is pop a little line of glue on these end tabs fold those over and that just neatens up those ends again just pinch for a few seconds and just until that adheres if you depending on the paper you're using you may find that you'll have uh, different drying times with your glue so I've got a slightly sort of pearlized effect to my card stock so it might take a little bit longer than something that's say um, a solid and very matte color or texture there we go okay so what's going to happen now is uh, this is going to fold back so I did fold it away so you could see what I was doing the side bits will fold into the box we'll just pop them in there and then this one will also fold in to finish our box off now I will be putting a ribbon around this which will finish it off nicely but I want to add some of that pattern paper first of all so I'm not worried about that closing just yet and as I say I'm going to be using pattern paper from the papercraft society box so I'm going to use my template as a guide because this is nice and flat just to measure out my mats and layers for each of the sides I'm not worried about the base but the front the back and the top and the two ends I do want mats and layers for if I've got enough paper. I might not have enough, I think I'll just about do it. But um, what I'll do is I'll go along, first of all, I'll mark just how long I want each of my strips. Bring that to, just to my trimmer. I've marked that with a pokey tool. So I haven't got to think about getting rid of any uh, pencil lines afterwards. Now that should be enough to do my small end panels. So this will be the same, then the same length for each of each of these panels. And then again with my pokey tool, I'm going to just mark it once. Let's just see there. And then if I bring this into here, into my trimmer, put my my uh, score line that I've just created where I'm going to cut and have a look. So that's three and a half centimeters. So what I can now do is cut three panels at three and a half centimeters and I know that they'll all fit the outside of the box. There's my three. Now I just need to do one more. So I've got a couple of squares here. Let's just see what will fit nicely. So I think this one will work nicely on the end here. I'm just going to do a little snip there. And again, I'm going to bring that into here. And it should be not too far off the measurement that you just did. So that's just over three and a half centimeters for the end panel. So almost near a four. There we go. So now all I need to do is coming back to my box is just use my wet glue and glue each of those on. I will look at the strips though. So one, two, three, and just decide which I consider the prettiest. But actually I'm going to keep them in 
in um, order I think so that when they're on the box they kind of flow so this will be the front this will be the top and that will be the back So now I've covered the box all oh, by the base with the beautiful paper. Um, I just need to find a sentiment and I love the green ones, but I think the pink works better. And we've actually got one here, a long thin one, have an amazing birthday. That's going to work really well on here. The, I think the white will pop against the dark colors that I've got in the box and on the papers. So I'll just cut this out. I'll adhere that on and yeah that's actually holding really nicely on its own without needing any ribbon or twine around it but certainly if you want to secure it I mean, as a table favour or something that would be lovely with a few chocolates in but if you do want to secure it certainly some ribbon around there would be beautiful which I'll probably add later on. Now that can go on the top or it can go on the front but I think the top is perfect. There we go really cute. I like that lovely so really nice easy template that you can use it's free to download on craft world so you can take yours print it off at home um, as many times as you want to but if like me if you use repositionable spray on it you can use it more than once before you need to reprint it so enjoy that and we'd love to see what you make using this template over in the inspiration gallery <laughs>